Today we are talking 10 things you should know in DaVinci Resolve if you're just getting started or even if you've been around DaVinci Resolve for a little while. These 10 things are just going to help get you a better understanding of Resolve, how it works, and some tips and tricks for working in Resolve. So let's jump into these 10 tips. Number one. Number one. Number one. The first thing is to know that there's the free version and the studio version. What's the big difference? Obviously with the studio version we get a lot of extra features and tools and effects and things like that. But the major difference is going to be that the free version does not use your GPU or it makes very little use of it. So with the studio version, Resolve is going to run smoother, it's going to run better for you. The free version is great, don't get me wrong, but you are limiting the access to your computer's power when you use the free version. Studio version is going to run better for you, run smoother for you. When I upgraded, I noticed a big improvement. So start with the free version, but if you edit a lot of video, definitely upgrade to the studio version. It's 100% worth it. Number two. Number, two. Number two. The second thing to know about Resolve is that the learning curve is steep. It takes a long time to get going in this program. There's a lot to learn, but take it step by step. Learn it one thing at a time as you get going in Resolve. When you come to a problem, Google it, search it on YouTube, look at my channel, check out some of the other awesome DaVinci Resolve YouTubers, and you're going to find out how to do what you need to do. You're never going to learn it all at once. There's so much of it here. I still have a ton to learn. I mean, there's just so much to learn in Resolve. It's kind of crazy. So take it step by step. The learning curve is steep, and the way that you're used to doing things may not be the way that you do it here in Resolve. So keep that in mind, take on the problems and tackle them as you come to them. Number three. Number three. All your DaVinci Resolve projects live in a database. A database just houses the project files themselves. It's not your media, it's not any assets for your project, it's just the project files. You can have tons of project files inside your database. I've got tons of them, I don't even know how many I got. But with your project files all in one database, it's easy to move things back and forth, copy things around from one project to another. And the thing you want to keep in mind with your project database is keep it on your internal hard drive. You want it to be a fast drive, keep it on your internal drive. That's going to give you the best performance out of your project files. If you're keeping it on an external drive, you can do it, but it's not recommended. It's not the best way to do it. Keep it on your internal hard drive. There's a lot of benefits to keeping one database for your projects. And remember, back up often. I'd say at least once a month, back up your database. And before before you ever upgrade any version of Resolve, always back up your database. On a side note, you can also back up individual projects and have DaVinci Resolve set up to live save, as well as have Resolve back up your individual projects in the preferences right here. Number four. Number four. So when you start working in Resolve, and even if you've been in it for a while, sometimes the audio just stops working. Why might that be? Let's check it out. So sometimes when you're in Resolve, the audio just stops working. You're not hearing anything. Here's the number one fix that I found based on comments from many, many people and recommendations that I've given them. Come on up to the DaVinci Resolve menu, come down to preferences. Then you want to come to system at the top. You want to come to video and audio I slash O and right here, output device. You want to make sure that this is your output device. Also make sure before you even get into Resolve that your output device is selected properly on your computer, which it should be. But your output device here, now I'm gonna go to my Evo 4, which is my output device, my audio interface. And if you're still having problems, you can't hear your audio once you do this and you save these settings, you can uncheck this box right here that says automatic speaker configuration and come down here and select your speaker output. That might work for you too. But once you go ahead and get those settings, go ahead and hit save. Come on back down into your timeline and now you should be good to go. So most of the time that's gonna fix your problem of not hearing any audio in Resolve. But if it doesn't, I do have videos on other options that you could try to help get your audio come through Resolve. Speaking about audio here in DaVinci Resolve, one of the things you should be doing on all of your projects is using high quality sound effects and music tracks. I'm a big fan of Epidemic Sound. I've been using their stuff for quite a while now. They have a ton of great music and sound effects on their website and they are the sponsor of today's video. And my favorite part of Epidemic Sound is the fact that you can download stems for their music. What does that mean? You can download just the bass part, just the guitar part, just the rhythm part, just the drums. You can download any part that you want. So maybe you like a song and it's got singing in it, but you don't want the singing, right? Because you're going to lay it over top of your video. Well, just download the stems and you can just not include the singing part or the singing track. You can use your other instruments and have the music track that you want in your video. Epidemic Sound is one of the best platforms for content creators to be able to add music and sound effects to the video without receiving copyright penalties. Epidemic Sound owns 100% of the rights to their music, so you never have to worry about any claims on your music or anything being removed in the future. Now, not only can you find over 35,000 music tracks on Epidemic Sound, but you can find over 90,000, 90,000 sound effects tracks. So pretty much any sound you're looking for, you can find it. So if you want some 
into these high quality assets from Epidemic Sound, I've teamed up with them this year for their Cyber Week discounts and they've got some great deals for you if you use my link in the description down below. You're going to get your 30 day free trial and you're also going to get an extra two months at a 75% discount. But that link is only good for five days and it's on the personal plan. So definitely hit up that link. Get some of these awesome assets. I love Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video and providing such a great service for us to use in our videos and make our videos awesome. Number five. Drag and drop. That's the next thing you should know here in DaVinci Resolve. You can drag and drop almost anything into Resolve. You can drag and drop pretty much any kind of file type, whether it's an image, an audio file, a video file, whatever it might be, drag and drop it into Resolve. You can drag and drop it into a bin right here, drag and drop. And not only can you drag and drop individual assets, let's say I wanted to drag and drop my whole folder structure, Resolve can set up all the bins for you. Check it out. All I have to do is grab my folder, bring it over in here, and I can just drop it right into my media pool. And it's going to put everything in there for me. Now, the other cool thing, if I undo that, is if I take that same folder, and instead of dragging it into the media pool right here, I bring it over here and drop it on my master, it's going to add all those folders that I have already set up in my Finder or in Explorer. It's going to add that all in as bins in DaVinci Resolve. So your whole folder structure is already set up. You don't have to create anything. Your bins are there. Everything is good to go. Now, not only can you drag and drop directly into the media pool, you can just drag and drop right into the timeline. It's going to put it in the media pool for you. For example, I have a video file here. If I just drag it down, drop it in my timeline, it's automatically going to add it to my project, put it right in my timeline, and you're good to go. Start working. So drag and drop, super handy. You can almost drag and drop anything here in the Resolve. It's awesome, and I use it all the time. Number six. Number six. The next tip here is super handy, and that is if you want to add only video or only audio to your timeline, but you've got a video clip that has audio and video to it. Check it out. In DaVinci Resolve here, you can make sure you've got your source viewer open. If you don't have it open, click this little guy right here. That'll open up both your windows. Double click your file that you want to have in your source viewer here from your media pool. And now if I hover on my clip down at the bottom here, we've got video only and audio only. So sometimes you just want the video clip. You don't need the audio. Maybe it's some sweet B-roll. Just click and hold on the video section, bring it down, and it's only going to bring in the video clip. And this will work for the entire clip or if you have in and out points set. Now, maybe you just need the audio. You film some sound effects or something. You don't need the video. Same thing. You can come and click on hold on the audio section and then bring your audio down into an audio track. Boom, there you go. You added just the audio onto your track. Now, a little bonus tip here for you. Check this out. Instead of grabbing my clip and bringing it into the timeline, what if I bring it over top of my timeline viewer over here? You get several different options here. You can insert the clip, overwrite it, replace, fit to fill, place on top, append at end, or ripple overwrite. So let's say I wanted to insert a clip here, but I didn't make a cut in my timeline. I can just come over here and go insert, Boom, and it drops it right into my timeline. It inserts it, it pushes everything over in my timeline. You're good to go. Super handy feature to be able to do this really quickly instead of having to come down here and click some of these icons right down here. So nice little bonus tip there for you. Number seven. Number seven. The next thing you need to know in DaVinci Resolve is how to copy and paste. The first one I want to tell you about is copy and paste attributes. Check it out. Let's say I've got a clip right here with me with a big head and I want to copy that to another clip. I can select my clip, use Command or Control C to copy it and then come to my next clip. Now, if I tried to just paste it with Command or Control V, it's going to replace the whole clip and paste the clip. I don't want to do that. I want to apply just the settings from my one clip to my next clip. So select your clip and use Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC plus the letter V. And that's going to bring up your Paste Attributes window. Now you can come in here and check on all your video attributes or you can just select the ones that you want to paste. And if I was doing it on an audio clip, you'd have options to paste your audio attributes as well. Go ahead and hit Apply. Now, if I check out my new clip, boom, there we go. Same big head in the picture there. So that's one way that you can copy and paste. I use that method all the time on every single video. Number eight. The next thing you need to know about here in DaVinci Resolve is adjustment clips. They come in super handy, but there's some things you need to know about them. In order to find your adjustment clips, come on to your effects, come down to effects on the left, and then you've got adjustment clip. I'm going to drag it down into my timeline, stretch this guy out. So when I'm using an adjustment clip, we can make changes, whether it's color grades, scaling, animations, anything. You can do it here in an adjustment clip, and it's going to affect anything that's below it. Now, it will affect everything that's below it. So if I've got two clips here, it's going to affect both clips. Keep that in mind. You can't have it affect 
just one clip right below it. Hopefully Black Magic adds that feature in soon. We'll see. But it will affect everything below the adjustment clip. So if I didn't want this particular clip affected by the adjustment clip, I could drag it up and put it above the adjustment clip. So you can come over here and again, click on your adjustment clip. We can scale changes. We can do color grades. We can do all kinds of different stuff here and it's going to affect the clip below it, but not actually change the original clip. The original clip in the timeline will remain as it is. And if you wanted to see the original, you can always just turn off your adjustment clip layer and see what your original footage looks like that's underneath that. But the big takeaway is that adjustment clips will affect everything that's below it. You can't isolate it to affect just one thing unless you put things above your adjustment track. Keep that in mind. That's super important. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. The next tool you got to know about here in Resolve is the match frame tool. This comes in really handy. So let's say you've got a clip here and right now my audio is there. It's fine. But let's say through the process of editing, oops, I accidentally deleted my audio and now I'm like, oh no, how am I going to line my audio back up? How do I find that exact point in the clip? Easy. You're going to use match frame to do it. So all you have to do is come and put your playhead at the beginning of your clip. And then you got this little icon right here, match frame. Go ahead and click on that. And now what Resolve did is it went to that source file and it matched up the in and out points for the clip that's in the timeline with the clip in the media pool, the original clip. So up here, now we've got our original clip here. I can click on my audio and just drag it down and drop it in the timeline. And now I've got my audio back for that particular clip. And just to make it easier to look at too, I can close my inspector. We can have both viewers open here. So my timeline viewer is right here. And now if I hit match frame, you've got match frame on either side. So the match frame tool is super handy. It saved me a lot of times when I've either messed up my video clip or messed up my audio and I need them back together again. The match frame tool is there to rescue you and help get things back in order for you. The next one I'm throwing in as a bonus here for you. Sometimes when you're working in your timeline, you get these little red numbers at the bottom, right? What does that mean? That means that your clips are not synced up, right? Instead of being like this right on top of each other, they're a little out of whack. Now, how did that happen? Well, this little icon right here is called the link icon. So if this is turned off, you can move your video clip and audio clip independently of each other. But when you look at the two clips, they're still linked together. So if I move something on accident and then I turn this link icon back on, now they move together, but notice they're not synced up. That little red number tells me they're off by 18 seconds, right? They should be at zero, zero, but they're off by 18 seconds. So if I play through the clip, my video is not gonna line up with the audio like this. I'm talking about gaps and tra So how do we fix it? It's very easy, just come and turn your link icon back off, deselect your clips, select the part you wanna move, move it back, and when they're lined up, that red number is gonna disappear. And then go ahead and turn your link icon back on, and then when you select them, they'll both move together again. That one is super handy, and a lot of people get tripped up on that one. Number 10. Number 10. This next one is a really handy tool when you're putting together videos. It's the slip tool or the trim edit tool. Check it out. So let's say in this clip right here, I want to move the video, right? But I want to keep the same in and out points and the same length of clip that I have here. Well, you could extend this out and move this one back and try and line it up. But there's an easier way to do it. If you come up and grab this tool right here, which is your trim edit mode, and you come down and you hover over your clip, you see we get this little icon right here. Now, if I click, I can hold and drag and now I'm just gonna slip the clip in between the point that I've already cut on either side and I can move it around. This is great for trying to line up B-roll, maybe line up things with, with a beat, with music. You can just move back and forth. And if I zoom all the way out, you're gonna see when I do this, we can see the actual ends and the handles of the entire clip, right? So we can slide it way down this way. We can slide it way down that way. And it gives us a good way to adjust our clips. That one's super handy. I love it. It's great for working with B-roll and things like that. Love that tip. You guys should love it too because it comes in super handy. And as another bonus here, this is a new feature in DaVinci Resolve 18.1, and that is the voice isolation and voice leveler. Now, if you're in studio, you're gonna get both. If you are in the free version, you're only gonna have the voice leveler, but you should still use it, and here's how it works. So back in Resolve, the voice isolation is gonna help remove background noise and just isolate your voice from extra noise you don't want. And the voice leveler is gonna help set your levels similar to how compression works. So you can apply these new effects on either a track or on a specific clip. To apply it to a specific clip, select your clip, Make sure your inspector's open right here. Go to the audio tab, and right here we have voice isolation and dialogue leveler. Just go ahead and turn them on. You can use one, both, 
it's up to you. For voice isolation, you can then come and click on this custom button right here. It's gonna give you this window and you've got the ability to make adjustments to either make the effect greater or less, depending on your particular clip. And this is gonna help remove background noise and just isolate the voice better so it sounds clear and we don't have extra noise going on in our clips. The dialogue leveler here, same thing. You can click on the little custom icon. It's gonna bring up this window for you and you have a few options you can change. And you can also adjust your output gain because sometimes when we apply these effects, our volume or our gain comes down a little bit. And here you've got the ability to boost it back up as the signal comes out of the effect. Super handy feature to know about here in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're not an audio person and you want your audio to sound better, these are two tools that are super easy to use that you just turn on and they're gonna do a great job for you. So there are 10 things you should know in DaVinci Resolve here, whether you're just getting started or you've been around Resolve for a little while. Huge thank you to Epidemic Sound. I love Epidemic Sound. They have great royalty-free assets. Use the link in the description below. You're gonna get 30 days free and you're gonna get two extra months at 75% off. It's a great deal. Epidemic Sound is awesome. Thank you so much, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>